Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this panel discussion on ASEAN's answer to the Myanmar crisis. My name is Tan Hui Yi, and I'm the Indochina Bureau Chief of the Straits Times and a board member of the Foreign Correspondents Club of Thailand. And I'm your moderator for tonight. Now, due to the COVID situation, this is a fully online panel discussion that's being broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube and also screened live at the FCCT. The club's uh, restaurant is still operating until 9 p.m. on weekdays. So if you're watching this from the FCCT, thank you for your support. Tonight's event is part of a series of discussions we have been running on the crisis in Myanmar. For a brief introduction, this is what has been taken, what has taken place since Myanmar's military or the Tamador seized power on the 1st of February. At least 753 people have been killed by the regime. Over 3,400 people have been detained. Mobile internet has been cut nationwide. Thousands of villages displaced. Dissidents and journalists have been forced to flee across the border. Now, ASEAN as a regional bloc, which Myanmar belongs to, is constrained by its policy of non-interference but it has been under tremendous pressure to act because Myanmar's crisis could become a major source of regional instability and affect its interaction with major powers. Last Saturday, ASEAN's leaders gathered in Jakarta together with Myanmar's military chief, Mio Lai, for a special summit. We can discuss more about whether it was appropriate to invite him, but they essentially reached a five-point consensus to cease violence, to hold a constructive dialogue among all parties concerned, to have a special envoy facilitate this dialogue, to have ASEAN provide humanitarian aid, and to have the special envoy and an ASEAN delegation to go to Myanmar to meet all the parties concerned. Now, what does this consensus mean and what will ASEAN need to do next? Can ASEAN be an effective platform to help bring about a resolution in Myanmar? Or will it, as some critics say, continue to be passive and toothless? For tonight, we have gathered some experts who can go beyond the usual rhetoric and give some deeper insight into what's at play and what we might see ASEAN doing in the next few weeks as it tries to live up to its five-point consensus. Tonight, we have uh, Mr. Ong King Yong, um, Executive Deputy Chairman of the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies of Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. Mr. Ong is also a former Secretary General of ASEAN. Next, we have Dr. Krapi Apichat Sakun, an Assistant Professor at Sinakarin Hero University and Vice President of the American Studies Association in Thailand. We have Mr. Kavi chong a veteran journalist and senior fellow at the Institute of Security and International Studies, Chulong University. Finally, we have Dr. Marty Natalagawa, former Foreign Minister of Indonesia. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, now to our viewers out there, if you have any questions at any point in time for our panelists, please write them in the comment section of the Facebook view, and please also state your name and affiliation, and we will be sure to pick them up. Now, on to our discussion. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Ong. Mr. Ong, you were the ASEAN Secretary General some years back, some years after Myanmar joined ASEAN, and you had to manage Western countries that were reluctant to deal with ASEAN as, as a result. You know, could you share with us what you think about ASEAN's initiatives this time around? Well, thank you. I wanted to remind ourselves that uh, ASEAN is a 10-member country organization, and there is a lot of diversity in the way the member countries' political, economic, and social structure and policies are organized. So far, I think there is general agreement with all the uh, 
uh, ASEAN officials that uh, the situation in Myanmar require a quick kind of uh, management. Yeah, that is a bureaucratic language that we use. We always have to manage something uh, in the ASEAN uh, setup. But uh, this time around, I think the urgency is keenly felt, uh, not only because so many uh, violent uh, activities had happened and many casualties had also been uh, inflicted on the civilian population, but because there are many things happening outside of Myanmar, outside of the ASEAN region, and there is a need for us to try to ensure that Southeast Asia does not become embroiled in all these kind of uh, issues that affect what we call the international order, the relationship among all the big powers in the world, and so on and so forth. All these have an impact on Southeast Asia. And on top of that, we have this thing called the COVID-19 pandemic. And as you can see in the daily news, this situation is going through many different permutations and waves after waves of uh, infections uh, require all of us to pay extra attention and try to work for a quick uh, cooperative framework to tackle or at least to contain the COVID-19 uh, spread. So this time around, what the ASEAN uh, leaders have done is to try to organize themselves to reach some basic, what I call, uh, baseline. And uh, all of you uh, have followed the proceedings uh, on Saturday. The ASEAN leaders met at the uh, uh, ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta, in Indonesia. And uh, we can discuss about all the uh, uh, outcome uh, emerging from that gathering. But what I thought is important is that, number one, the situation is quite dire due to the uh, casualties and damage done to the Myanmar people and the Myanmar society. Number two, there is a raging uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, which restrict a lot of uh, normal diplomatic activities as well as traveling by the uh, ordinary people across our region. And number three, the international situation is not in the most positive of what we call health. Yeah. So the good thing was, in spite of, or despite all these things, the leaders all came together. Uh, three countries. Uh, leaders were not able to attend, but they sent uh, their ministerial representatives. So they came out with a what I call rather positive plan. Yeah, and many people talk about a five-point consensus. Yeah, for the sake of our audience out there, maybe just for me to repeat and uh, uh, quickly the five points: stop violence. Yeah, read. Um, resume dialogue among all stakeholders, yeah. allow ASEAN to play a constructive role, facilitate a visit by an ASEAN delegation, and uh, number five, facilitate humanitarian assistance led by ASEAN as well as other involved uh, parties. Yeah. So this came out in the uh, uh, what we call chairman statement. Uh, it is a specific piece of paper uh, with these five points there. Uh, we can dis discuss some of these details as we uh, go on to this uh, to this uh, panel discussion. So for me, I think this is an initial step. Yeah. Uh, there is a long process ahead of us, but obviously I hope that the first thing we hope to have uh, stop of the violence, stoppage of the violence and people can start uh, engaging each other in dialogue. Unfortunately, this did not seem to be the case because at least here in Singapore, we have read the report just now. Uh, some protesters were 
uh, fired upon and a few of them might be killed. Yeah. And so uh, this is something that uh, uh, we need to uh, watch very carefully. The immediate action that we are expecting from this uh, gathering of leaders is that the ASEAN Secretary General uh, he is going to uh, organize a group of uh, 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 people together to visit Myanmar as soon as possible. Yeah. And uh, hopefully the conversation or the engagement over on the ground there in Myanmar will be uh, a further positive steps towards what the leaders are expecting. Uh, but the leaders have all assured each other that uh, they are committed to uh, manage this uh, situation and um, try to find a solution to it. Uh, however, they all know that it is not going to be a straightforward, uh, quick uh, journey. I will stop here for the time being to let the others have their say. Mm, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, like, I agree. It's not going to be a short or straightforward journey. Well, let's move on to uh, Dr. Prafi. Dr. Prafi, you have written about the you know, principle of responsibility to protect. Is that relevant in any way to this discussion on Myanmar, in particular to ASEAN's role? What are your thoughts? Yeah. You need to your microphone. She needs to unmute her microphone. All right. So can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you now. Oh, yeah, you okay. muted yourself okay, just um, now. I'm sorry. Let's. So, um, so uh, let's. So, Let's start um, good, from the beginning here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm I'm, I'm very honored uh, to be on this uh, panel discussion and to to have the opportunity to speak with um such a high level colleagues. Um, thank you for FCCT uh, for organizing this event. Um, this is my first time to be here, and um, so um, first of all, I'm, I would like to mention that uh, so, several weeks ago, before the ASEAN summit, um. Um, the, the the organizer had invite, invited me to talk about RTP. Um, um, there there are many questions today following the, the ASEAN summit on Myanmar last Saturday, uh, regarding to the five point um, um, this, uh, consensus. Um, um, so this evening I will try to apply my knowledge about international law and RTP norm to the Myanmar crisis um, to the best of my ability. Um, I'm now go I'm going to show you my PowerPoint. Um, so everybody knows uh, at this point um, that summit's result in five point consensus. Um, did everyone uh, uh, say um, and content say already about um, the five point is about to stop violence um, and set up a constructive uh, dialogue among party. Uh, to provide an um, special envoy and um, provide an ad humanitarian, uh, humanitarian um, assistance and um, and also the special delegation will visit Myanmar and conclude this matter. Okay, um, so so for um, for me, uh, my uh, my observation um, to this um, five point consensus, um, I I think. Um, five point consensus. Uh, we can see that. Um, second. I'm sorry about. This. Oh, it still hear me. Yes, we can see here. Oh, okay. Um, the five point consensus um is um mm, it's a good solution um but um but um, I'm, I'm so I'm concerned about the the time frame 
end that still have no specific detail um, plan. So um, I'm, I'm worried that um, um, so 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 I'm also concerned about um, um, this is like maybe it's just like a, uh, maybe it's because of other nations try to uh, put the pressures on ASEAN to solve this problem. So. Um, ASEAN try to uh, um, this, is, this is the way that ASEAN try to decrease the pressure from the international communities, and um, maybe I'm worried it's about like a lip uh, service, but um, maybe mm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. That can uh, they they will fail to uh, solve the problem or not? So um, this is from my my observation, um, and so um, next. Slide. I will show you. Okay. So, so maybe uh, there will be the question uh, about the about the uh, about the obligation. So, uh, what's next? Uh, the ASEAN member uh, obligation in this crisis. So, um, um, actually, the, um, in the Article Five. Um, the obligation uh, Article Five of ASEAN Charter, um, ASEAN member states have um, ex uh, have to commit themselves to comply with the collective provisions in the agreement. Um, so, uh, let me explain to you more. Um, see, and also um, about the consensus. Uh, the consensus. Let me explain to you about the the, con um, the Article Twenty. Uh, subsection one, the uh, the ASEAN member must follow follow the outcome of the consensus and apply the situation. Um, so um, now um, how may they do that? To do do that, uh, um, well, that there's number of ways such as the uh, bilateral negotiation, private talks. Um, they could um, apply to pressure uh, with the political difference, or perhaps uh, even to apply sanctions. Um, so uh, we move to the the question that um, so how um, how the international law um, applies uh, this um, if the anti coup protester will call uh, will still call for outside intervention um, the non the, the non intervention is the core value in so, um, in sovereignty. And that means nation state cannot interfere. And also the UN Charter Article Two, uh, Subsection Four state that um, the use of force violates international law, except the case of self defense. However, um, the current invitations of anti coup protester to the outsider to help solve this problem, um, we can call it like um, the intervention by uh, invitations and this. And this um, will lead the way to the norm we call responsibility to protect, uh, or we say that it's R R two P. Okay, so uh, what's this R two P? What's it R two P? Um, the responsibility to protect um, is an international norm, and um, a commitment to stop genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanities. Um, the the move to this slide. Okay, so uh, the main the main concept um, of R two P is that, that every nation in the world must protect uh, must protect their people from uh, this crime and uh, to their you know, all, all nations in the world must uh, encourage and assist other nation to meet is that responsibility um when and the last one is when the nation fail to protect its population military interventions is possible but um only if authorized by the u.n security council um so um let me show you this slide okay so you will see from this slide um, that r2p uh, related in many ways um, and many things here uh, a lot um, in my opinion um, 
right now um atrophy can can be good things but when it direct help the people uh but we have to be mindful with with the r2p uh because it can lead to be a negative outcome such as use of force and that i showed on the screen uh use of force or and exploitation when uh by outside nation uh in Myanmar case um r2p for me for me in in that case um i think um r2p is not not appropriate at it may prolong this process but and it's based in western ideal uh which may, might allow the other nations to take advantage of this situation um i for me i think i still think that the ASEAN is a base organization uh, uh for so um, the crisis in Myanmar because ASEAN and its members have a closer connection and deeper understanding of Myanmar. Uh, um, that is my presentation. Um, thank you for listening to uh, what I had to say today about the situation. But, and I hope you can find it useful as we move forward. Yeah, thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Prapi. Uh, just a reminder to all, if you're watching this at home and would like to pose a question, please write them in the comment section of our Facebook live video. Now let's move on to uh, Kun Kobi. Now Kun Kobi, you've always had your ear very close to the ground when it comes to all matters of ASEAN. So what do you think we can expect here after the summit? Well, I expect a lot uh, out of uh, summit uh, three days ago. First of all, I'm, I was kind of uh, very happy that ASEAN got together and come up with a five point, I would say a five point roadmap. Yes, it's a consensus. It's a step by step. It's just like playing music, do re mi fa son. And the pitch will going higher after it's uh, five points uh, has been attained. And I think uh, also uh, the junta leader also has shown some commitment as a member of ASEAN family. Uh, in the past 72 hours, the the violence inside the country has been reduced, but it's not totally. I think this is something that we still need to work on. And I think uh, pressure from ASEAN must continue. Meanwhile, uh, to make sure that uh, things will proceed uh, uh, quickly and also in tangible way, ASEAN uh, must, first of all, decide on the uh, formula, whether we will have uh, uh, what sort of uh, ASEAN envoy we will have. So I think uh, after we have an ASEAN envoy, then we can proceed with the uh, next step of having some uh, the team uh, going inside Myanmar to scoop for information, assess the situation both on the ground and for uh, humanitarian. And I think this is very good uh, development because it's put ASEAN again in the driver's seat. And this time I noticed something that uh, the international communities, member of the United Nations Security uh, um, Council really uh, trust ASEAN to handle this regional uh, issue. And I think in the end, ASEAN will prove that uh, ASEAN can do the job, but it will, uh, take some time. And also, uh, one point that is very interesting in the chairman's statement, which I think uh, uh, Ambassador Ong Kang Yong uh, has mentioned, is the external environment, which has created a lot of whether ASEAN as a regional organization can handle this crisis without outside intervention. Now it is clear that ASEAN has come forward and uh, address the issue of U.S. China library at in uh, direct impact on whatever peace and stability within the region. That explains why uh, I actually I was so surprised that the chairman's statement would put this thing on urging ASEAN foreign minister uh, to meet as soon as possible with counterpart uh, from the U.S. and China to make sure. Uh, that ASEAN uh, will handle this regional issue and uh, 
want to make sure that uh, their support are very uh, important. And uh, luckily so, I think uh, China and other countries have expressed our full support of their ASEAN's uh, five-point consensus. So we have to be patient because um, ASEAN, uh, when ASEAN make a commitment, unlike any other organization, ASEAN cannot retract. ASEAN has been with, uh, for example, Thailand for 13 solid years during the conf uh, Cambodian conflict. And now with the uh, Myanmar crisis, uh, it will take some time. So we need to watch carefully uh, ASEAN move. And uh, of course, uh, Myanmar uh, people uh, also have to understand the limitations that uh, uh, member ASEAN country has. As uh, Ong Kang Yong has pointed out, we are a very diverse group, just like uh, uh, Disneyland's of a political system or world political system contained in ASEAN uh, uh, grouping. So I'm confident that uh, ASEAN can handle a Myanmar crisis because uh, ASEAN has been able to handle many crises uh, before. Luckily this time uh, it has a good start, a little bit uh, delayed because uh, of the timing of other issues, uh, the COVID-19 and all that. So. When I'm looking forward, I hope that uh, both the military junta and ASEAN will closely work together and uh, hopefully all stakeholders will uh, sooner or later will come on to the negotiating table, realizing that uh, in order to fulfill the Myanmar people's uh, view, uh, you have to start dialogue and uh, looking forward. And one thing is also very positive, I think, international community are very uh, supportive of ASEAN. For example, uh, I heard that Australia has already committed $5 million to help with the whatever plan that ASEAN uh, has to do with the humanitarian uh, system. So I'm pretty optimistic. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Kankami. That was a really positive outlook that you gave. Uh, and now let's move on to uh, Dr. Marty. Now, Dr. Marty, you've always been a very passionate advocate for ASEAN in this higher ideals, let me say. Has the recent ASEAN consensus been up to your expectations? And what does ASEAN need to do next? Well, thank you very much for the kind invitation and wonderful to be amongst uh, colleagues again. Uh, I mean, the ASEAN summit recently convened and concluded is uh, a significant and important uh, event. Uh, to me, uh, first and foremost, as far as internal ASEAN dynamic is concerned, at least it put to rest uh, any hesitation or any confusion, confusing messages that initially came out whether ASEAN should engage on the Myanmar issue or development. Because uh, as a matter of fact, over these past years and decades even, ASEAN has been engaged on Myanmar throughout its reform process. And therefore, it was rather uh, surprising in some ways when the coup uh, uh, occurred, there was some initial uh, going back and forth and hesitation and mixed messages among ASEAN member states, whether it should or shouldn't engage on Myanmar. Uh, at least with the summit, at the very least, now there is no going back. ASEAN is out there engaging and publicly committing itself to be part of the solution to the developments in, in Myanmar. And uh, all the usual question marks, whether this is uh, in violation of principle of uh, uh, non-interference, or the reality of the different political systems that uh, ASEAN member states uh, have. I think they are, in a way, important facts, but since ASEAN is now meant to be a community, and there are actually commitments that all ASEAN member states, as sovereign states, have made through the ASEAN Charter, through the ASEAN Human Rights Declaration, etc. So even though uh, it is not impossible uh, to, on the one hand, promote, protect uh, democratic principles, 
uh, and at the same time be respectful of uh, the principle of non-interference. But in any case, as I said, those are now have fortunately behind us. Now through the summit, ASEAN has demonstrated and publicly put it out there, they are engaged and there's no turning back. Uh, you know, we, we can't have piecemeal or a la carte regionalism. You cannot suddenly have individual ASEAN member states backtracking from their summit level commitments made on Saturday. And I think the second point, the summit is, is important because it, it sort of sets the scene or reinforce the message that ultimately the crisis in Myanmar must find, must be resolved by in peaceful means, through dialogue, through diplomacy, through dialogue among the stakeholders. You know, all of us are so familiar with, with other conflict situation in other parts of the world. You know, you think of places like Syria, Libya, and others where years and on end, uh, we see delay in finding political solution, and as a result, the main uh, the victims and those who suffer as a result are the ordinary citizens and peoples of those countries involved. And therefore, I think without delay, as a result of the ASEAN summit, following the ASEAN summit, not only are we reinforcing the message of ASEAN being engaged, we should also be reinforcing the message that it is, this is a problem that requires political solution, dialogue, diplomacy, and ASEAN deserves support uh, in those efforts. Uh, it is not going to be uh, uh, um, an easy task. Others have mentioned the uh, consensus, the five-point consensus. Uh, they are, as, as others have said, important uh, points. To me, most of all, uh, the five-point consensus is important because it sets a benchmark of, of progress or lack of progress. Henceforth, it's notwithstanding its uh, obvious, uh, 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 you know, there's always scope and room for, for, for improvement, but the five points are important points, and now we can measure progress against those five points. For instance, the first point, to do with the uh, cessation of violence. Since Saturday, if I'm not mistaken, we have seen continued perpetration of violence by the junta against demonstrators, peacefully uh, you know, expressing their views. Having made that commitment on Saturday, now such acts are even more abhorrent, even more unacceptable because commitments have been made before all ASEAN leaders. So in other words, the five points to me are extremely important because it sets the bar, it sets the benchmark against which to measure or to, to, uh, to monitor and to report and to verify uh, compliance. I am not especially uh, uh, encumbered by the notion of delegation going back and forth. Those are means to an end. Uh, you know, I mean, rather than being focused on, uh, we can take things one step at a time. For instance, ASEAN member states, all of them have embassies in, in Yangon, Napida. Why don't the nine member states of ASEAN through their existing embassies constitute themselves as some kind of a, uh, in some kind of a coordinated role to measure and to report and to verify developments based on the five points on the ground. So in other words, therefore, you know, we shouldn't, it's, we should be looking at things that can be done uh, here and now rather than simply, uh, you know, relying the two trying to be procedurally correct. Of course, having a special envoy, having the delegation of ASEAN to, to Myanmar would be a test of uh, the, the goodwill of the junta. But there are other things that ASEAN member states can do now post-summit. We have the benchmark, we have the, the, the criterion against which to measure progress. But, you know, I mean, in my initial remarks, I wanted to, to mention 
just one thing, uh, if I may, just as a concluding remarks before we open the discussion. I, I think it's especially important, and, and I thought I haven't heard it uh, just now expressed, especially important for ASEAN to be seen, not only to be doing that, to be seen, to be engaged with the national unity government, with the civil disobedience, uh, uh, disobedience national unity government and the civil disobedience movement and other stakeholders. Because a dialogue must be inclusive in nature. Well, I, can, I get the point that, of course, at the initial stage at the summit just now, without conferring uh, recognition, ASEAN must deliver the message directly to the junta so that there can, there can be no mistaking uh, in sensing the mood within ASEAN. But I think in the days to come, not weeks, in the days to come, in my view, ASEAN member states, either individually or even better collectively, or the chair, must be seen to be engaging the stakeholders, other stakeholders, the democratic forces. Otherwise, the credibility of the process that ASEAN had just launched may be gradually be eroded. Hence, extremely important not only to be engaging the junta, but to be demonstratively, deliberately, publicly engaging the democratic forces. There is no level playing field. I have to be extremely clear about that. The junta came to power. They seized power by bullets, by guns. We have at the opposite ends leaders who are democratically elected to the ballot boxes. So there cannot be moral equivalence. Hence, in my view, ASEAN, with all, I mean, what a tremendous achievement, I mean, uh, development that ASEAN made possible through the summit, thanks to the hard work of all concerned, including the foreign minister of Indonesia, Thailand, and Singapore, Malaysia, and others have worked tirelessly. And, and it's, it's great that they have had the summit, but it is, as they have themselves said, this is the beginning of a process, but uh, now it's out there. We shouldn't let the junta to wiggle themselves, to wiggle themselves out of this commitment, because I've read in the past several hours, some kind of uh, uh, water, you know, trying to water down or qualifying their commitments to consensus they have reached or they have been part of. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think, there must be now corresponding reaching out to the national unity government, the civil disobedience movement and other stakeholders. So there is a semblance of dialogue, um, I mean, reaching out to all concerned. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Marti. Uh, now, that, now that you mentioned the, the watering down of uh, what was agreed during the ASEAN leaders meeting. I thought it might be helpful if I read out this uh, portion of the press release issued by the Junta, the State Administration Council, on the ASEAN leaders meeting. Now, let me pull up this portion. Myanmar informed the meeting that it will give careful consideration to, uh, careful consideration to constructive suggestions made by ASEAN leaders when the situation returns to stability in the country. Since priorities at the moment were to maintain law and order and to restore community peace and tranquility. In this regard, Myanmar also informed the meeting that the suggestions would be positively considered if it would facilitate the implementation of the five step roadmap laid down by the State Administration Council serves the interests of the country and was based on the purposes and principles enshrined in the ASEAN Charter, ASEAN Way, and ASEAN Spirit. So that's a whole lot of qualifiers there that raises questions about the kind of commitment that the State Administration Council would have to the five-point uh, consensus that was sealed over the weekend. So maybe let's uh, let this be the first question that I will pose to our panelists. What do you think of 
this kind of statement coming out from the junta, what does it say about the kind of commitment that it has to what was agreed over the weekend? Anybody like to begin? Yeah. I, I think about the oh. uh, uh, commentaries and the qualifiers are coming out. The fact of the matter is that we are really, according to the ASEAN uh, mode of operation, a particular document. And at that point in time, none other than the head of the Tamado was in uh, uh, meeting with our other ASEAN leaders. Yeah. The important thing now is that words can be put out to explain certain things, to try to qualify certain things, but the necessary action on the ASEAN side will proceed. Yeah. So for me, I do not want to be distracted by all these uh, statements and qualifiers, but hoping that our Secretary General of ASEAN and the rest of the ASEAN uh, member states uh, who have uh, agreed to this uh, approach will quickly organize the next step, uh, get on with the work. Yeah. So I will not put too much uh, into these statements and other things that come into the way. Yeah. Just get on with the work and if we move to the next stage where action is being implemented and according to our five point uh, consensus and the military authorities on the ground in Myanmar uh, refuse to follow, uh, then we will have a serious problem. But right now, I think uh, let's give the process a chance. Yeah, The important thing now is, as I said just now, uh, the action against the protesters uh, should be minimized, especially if they are peaceful protests on the streets. Yeah. The use of lethal force, lethal force, uh, was condemned by all our uh, ASEAN leaders, every one of them. Yeah. If you uh, look at the uh, plea by all our ASEAN leaders, it is not to aggravate the situation. So let us hope that uh, yes, we take account of these uh, statement coming out, but uh, I will not uh, lose hope because they are new qualifier and whatnot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anybody else like to address the question? Huh? Yes. Well, they are. Okay. Uh, but maybe, please, uh, maybe, maybe concur first, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I, I, I agree with him that it's time for actions. And, well, um, he's um, saying less words and um, statement, but we must follow through um, in the resolution, which in the summit now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, I hate to say this. Uh, if you read the document by Tatmadaw, this is the way uh, it always responds to whatever commitment it has. This is not the first time it has coming out with all qualifiers. I think the only indication will be uh, action on the ground, on the street. Certainly, like Mati, but Mati has said that uh, in the past 72 hours, even though the violence has been uh, lessened, it's not completely absent. So I think uh, it will take time. but. Uh, if in the next uh, days and weeks and uh, some of this consensus uh, were not uh, totally uh, implemented, uh, then I think ASEAN will have to think of uh, uh, other measure. But for the time being, it uh, rests on us that uh, we have to uh, move on with uh, the plan. And I think that is why uh, setting up uh, ASEAN envoy and the point that Marty mentions the dialogue with the all stakeholder with the NUG is very uh, important. And I think ASEAN already has informal approach with, with, with uh, some of the key members. Yeah. Just uh, very quickly, if I may, uh, I agree 
with the points other colleagues have mentioned before, and especially, uh, you know, I mean, one recognizes uh, diplomacy or mediation uh, is a process, it's not an event. Uh, you know, I mean, one can't expect out of a two or three hours meeting, a summit, suddenly there is a, a day and night change and everything becomes uh, all, all solved. There will be uh, vacillations, there will be ups and downs, and there will be confusing signals and, and, and et cetera, that uh, the, 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 uh, mediator, the med uh, mediator or the parties that are trying to resolve the issue must be able to decipher uh, uh, the intent, the true intent of the party concern. But, you know, I mean, this is a time when trust needs to be built, uh, trust in one another's uh, 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 goodwill to carry through. But the point that I said before at the beginning is, is still, to me, valid in the sense that now ASEAN has a script, uh, thanks to the summit. Now ASEAN has those five point principles. Uh, which is very useful as a benchmark to measure on a day in and day out basis to what extent they are being uh, implemented. And, and uh, it seems to me quite fair as well uh, that the same the, the five point principles must be communicated and explained and shared properly, publicly uh, with the national unity government and the other stakeholders. Uh, otherwise, it will be, there has to be as uh, Foreign Minister of Indonesia had mentioned before, if I'm not mistaken, and a Myanmar owned uh, and Myanmar led process. And you can't, such a process must be inclusive in nature. And, uh, you know, I mean, Pa Ong Keng Yong would be familiar with the experience past. You know, I mean, we've had so many UN envoys on Myanmar. And I remember many, many occasions in the past that. Uh, it was a little bit of a paradox that uh, Myanmar would be open to uh, the idea of having UN envoys come to uh, Yangon, but when it comes to ASEAN delegations, uh, they would be a bit more hesitant. They, 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 they would say that this is an internal matter, etc. Uh, and so it was a bit of an ironic and, and a paradoxical situation, but sometimes uh, we can, you know, we can just press on as Pa uh, Ong Keng Yong, uh, I guess, uh, uh, suggests and just move forward. Because I remember in 2011, uh, I went as a foreign minister of Indonesia to Myanmar to speak with all the different democratic stakeholders when the idea of Myanmar chairing ASEAN was being mooted. Uh, you know, we, I didn't wait for some document to say that, uh, you know, it's agreed that you should visit. I just turn up. Uh, likewise, in 2012, when the Rahin situation developed, we just turn up at, at the at the uh, in 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 uh, to deal with the issue. Uh, in other words, uh, yes, it is a process. There will be conflicting signals. We must have perseverance, resilience, and commitment, and wage uh, the the peace. But the point again that I wanted to underscore is that there must be a reaching out to the democratically elected forces in Myanmar. Uh, that is just to me is obvious point. Thank you. Thank you. Note, well, let's uh, uh, move on to, yes, please. On that note, I wanted to just add that uh, if you read all the uh, words coming up from um, the ASEAN summit in Jakarta, on uh, the consistent uh, uh, line is that uh, our ASEAN leader expressed the need to engage all the mm. parties involved. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, some media reports suggested that uh, his uh, leader of the Tamadol uh, should not be there because yeah, uh, the, he does not represent uh, the people of Myanmar. Uh, mm. However, I think our leader's approach is to say that all the stakeholders, whether uh, Hamadol, whether uh, democratically elected uh, uh, politicians, people of uh, Myanmar, all of them must be engaged. So mm. I think that's uh, uh, give some uh, uh, credence to the uh, leader. They are political leaders in our 10 countries. 
uh, I think they'll be happy with being snooped by any of uh, statements or action <laughs> anybody else would want to uh, put it off, you know. So, uh, important thing is, one, there is going to be a dialogue. And the dialogue must be credible. It cannot be just a dialogue between ASEAN, a member state, and the Namado. It was the purpose. Yeah. So, this is something that I think we uh, watch in uh, the next uh, couple of days. Thank you. Great. So, so the general message is to be patient and look for the action instead of what's being said. Right. Yeah, but not patient okay, so to the extent that, eh. patient yeah. to the extent that uh, there is a further delay. You know, yeah, we we have to follow the thing systematically, <laughs> just moving. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and we don't want to, uh, you know, say the thing is over. Let's wait three days to the X or Y. No, no, no. Uh, so keep the ball rolling, as we say. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, we will move on to the question from our viewers. Uh, the first question we have from is from Raja Kid. There's a lot of interest in this special envoy that ASEAN is going to appoint. So the question is, is there any person in mind you think um, who, who you think possible to be appointed as ASEAN special envoy? Um, kind of properties must this person have? Uh, and it should the person be from the chair of Brunei or not? I guess this person means uh, should this person, should this special envoy be someone nominated by uh, Brunei? What do you think? Well, Bamati had been a foreign minister before. He knows the part of being a special envoy. Yeah. My experience was being a secretary, a secretary general to the political leader. My own view is that it doesn't matter who is the person, as long as that person has the mandate. Hmm. Yeah, the mandate. And we must not forget the responsibility of the Secretary General. The Secretary General hmm. ASEAN is a Secretary General, uh, but he is more Secretary than General. He has to take the lead uh, from the leaders, and now he has this five pointing uh, in his hand, and he will have to facilitate the actual appointment of the special envoy. Yeah, uh, the chair of ASEAN today is uh, Brunei. Therefore, Brunei will have to uh, crack on it very quickly. Yeah, and then the Secretary General, according to ASEAN Charter and all that, will have to provide all the necessary resources and whatever hmm. uh, logistic requirement to execute the first of the plan. Yeah, so. I think it is not necessary to really agonize over who is the guy, what kind of qualification he has. Uh, uh, we can even appoint Kobe, uh, Kavi as a special envoy here. As long as he has the mandate. Yeah, as long as he's a mandate, the Secretary General is required to support Kavi. Yeah. So yeah. what is necessary is uh, to have the confidence that whoever appointed to this uh, role will carry out according to the decision of the uh, uh, leaders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in this respect, uh, as uh, Patmati and the rest of us have expressed, important to have the envoy engaging all those stakeholders in Myanmar. You cannot just go and just say hello to Tamado uh, and meet a few uh, people on uh, state TV and that's about it. No, no, no. I think it is very clear. Yeah. So I would say that who is in uh, who is going to be envoy is not important than what is the mandate and the clarity about what he has to do. Can I have a crack what on this? The, qual the qualities of this person. I know you mentioned this about mandate, but what about the qualities of this person? This well, person first of all, he has to be brave enough like... to go to Myanmar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't forget, Myanmar is this in the middle. This person will be well protected. Yeah, well, you can protect against the tamado, but what about the uh, virus and other kind of uh, invisible uh, threat? So I think uh, it is uh, something uh, that we have to think about, but they don't have much time. They have to do it quickly. Yeah. 
of course, in this case, uh, we, I think the ASEAN leaders have basically, according to ASEAN uh, mode of operation, uh, has entrusted it to the Secretary General to follow up. Yeah, but the ASEAN chair is Brunei, and it has to be the guy that make the first move. I wish to appoint uh, Kavi Chongkitabong to be the envoy, and then uh, Secretary General uh, Lim Chok Hoi will have to talk to Mr. Kavi. When you want to go, how are you going to do it? Blah blah blah. So I think this is something um, uh, of a pressure, but pressure is exerted on the, the chair. The currently is uh, Brunei. Yeah, but uh, they have done a good job uh, bringing together all the ASEAN for the uh, ASEAN leaders for the summit, and I think they are not going to rest there. They want to finish the the task before them. Yeah, I just want... can I add to to what uh, uh, Ambassador Ong Ken Yong has said. I I the the Thai has proposed the formula friend of the chair, mm -hmm. uh, realizing that uh, chairman has a lot of uh, tasks, numerous uh, responsibility and would like to, to propose this idea so that uh, friend of the chair, as a chair, can appoint uh, in the team. Of course, you will have ASEAN envoy, you will have secretary general and uh, somebody else that will come in to help monitoring uh, the situation on the ground and also handling the uh, humanitarian and other things. I think uh, uh, secretary general or the chairs probably uh, is looking into all this possibility. And also, ASEAN also has a formula of TRICA uh, that have been uh, quite useful in the past. And of course, uh, the role of Secretary General and his office has been quite important during the crisis, NAKIS. So I think when you put all the three together, you, you can have a real picture as to how ASEAN will proceed as a team with individual person doing certain tasks. Um, can I add something? I agree with uh, Kun Gawi um, because of um, the our our um, ASEAN charter. Um, now they they give the uh, secretary uh, secretary general more power uh, to engage, and also I think um, um, not only the uh, special envoy, but but um, he he must um, he must show the potential uh, uh, to this crisis. That um, okay, keep, uh, keep watching the um, in this uh, process. So I think the 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 uh, general secretary is just like a, a key key person. Okay, thank you. If I may, we uh, I agree with the, the uh, what others have said before uh, on on in response to the question. Uh, I'm less uh, pr uh, preoccupied with the person, but rather more in terms of the. The, uh, the conducive environment which uh, would allow or not allow uh, that said person, uh, uh, she or he, as an envoy to be able to carry out his or her work. I think uh, just now, uh, Aung Keng Yong mentioned about the importance of a, a clear mandate, for instance, that will be extremely important so that the person concerned would be able to have the requisite uh, uh, mandate and understanding of what is the task being being set for for her or him. Uh, at the same time, I, I think this is a situation where uh, less can be more as well. I mean, we really don't know uh, what is how the different permutations will find its resolution, really, because the, this set. This supposed envoy is this envoy is supposed to mediate, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in the words of the uh, of the consensus between the different uh, parties in in Myanmar, and therefore uh, the, he or she must be given plenty of room uh, to be able to find convergences and and uh, you know identifying differences uh, is pretty simple, but identifying convergences is, is not as as easy. It will be extremely difficult enough to have to bring together the different parties in Myanmar if at the same time you have to watch out or to be to be encumbered by uh, you know uh, to straight jacketed approach so I think there has to be a degree of flexibility uh, for the special envoy for her for her or for him 
to be able to, you know, to identify the contour of the situation, uh, where the convergences are, uh, and basically to test ideas. I think this is the beauty of having a special envoy. Uh, whatever idea that being proposed will be essentially his or her idea. Uh, I mean, uh, leaders, the Myanmar parties may accept it, may reject it, but it's not like a high stakes, immediately leaders level, immediately formal ministerial level. Or So it is, uh, that's why I think, yes, uh, clarity of mandate is important, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, logistical support, of course, but at the same time, uh, here I think is where uh, simplicity uh, can, can actually help as well, because the, this person's main task, I believe, will be to listen first and foremost, <laughs> because they have to listen. Uh, there's no magic wand, really. I mean, who, 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 they have to be able to listen uh, to the wishes and demands of the different sides, what, which is uh, through uh, what is their intent and their position, their concern, and to identify uh, convergences. And in this task, this is a very thankless task, uh, this person cannot be second guessed. Uh, you know, each time along the way, this is where I think informality becomes especially important. You know, nowadays uh, diplomacy is so 24-7 uh, under the watchful eyes and glare of every little step that one takes. This is where I think, I, and ASEAN has been very good at this actually, if I'm not mistaken, Kunkafi and Dr. Prapi, you know, when you think of all the various achievements as ASEAN achieved in the past, uh, a lot of it was done informally, uh, uh, where ASEAN's informality and approach is actually, it was its strength. So, uh, but my last point on, on not the person, on the condition, I think the trust of all the parties concerned, of course, the, the trust and confidence of the chair of ASEAN, of the rest of ASEAN, but first and foremost, the trust and confidence of the stakeholders in Myanmar. Uh, you, you, you know, someone in ASEAN may come up with anyone that they wish they think who's super, super competent, but if that person is not well received in Myanmar itself by one of the parties or some of the parties, then it becomes a moot point. So first and foremost, trust and confidence, comfort level, very important. And uh, we have a chair of, uh, in Brunei who is uh, extremely uh, well invested and well experienced and uh, leaders of ASEAN that have demonstrated leadership in recent days and, and I'm, I'm confident that the, uh, this will be uh, you know, important uh, uh, roadmap ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's an incredible amount of pressure on that one person. Uh, <laughs> well, the next question we have is from Phil Showell of the Sunday Times. It's half comment and half question directed at Kun Kawi. Um, how can Kun Kawi conclude that ASEAN is in the driving seat and that he's so optimistic when, following Min Aung Hlaing's return to Myanmar, the junta has said that it only considers the consensus proposals as suggestions to be considered if they fit with the Tamadol's roadmap? And only after they have stabilized the country, however, they choose to define the facts. That's a sharp, sharp and immediate rebuff from the generals to ASEAN. Never mind that the summit did not involve the country's elected politicians. I guess we, we talked about uh, that a little before, but if you want to add a bit more to in response well, to well, uh, thank Phil's you. question. Well, th thank you for the question. I, I'm looking at ASEAN and it works. Uh, in a long haul. Of course, the, I wish that uh, after the meeting on Saturday, that all violence stop immediately, just like Harry Potter movie. But in reality, that could not happen. It has to be a gradual uh, praise, uh, praised uh, uh, sort of uh, reduce of uh, violence. For me, in the past three days, uh, if I have to give a mark, it's like uh, C. It should be plus, you know, but it still could not attend. And I hope that in days to come, there should be a better uh, situation on the ground. And I think this is important because when ASEAN is in the driver's seat, it's not only one country. We have 10 countries, including the junta. So 
we 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 take time we sit on the seat we drive and then somebody else will come in also we change rotate it. that is the beauty of ASEAN so I'm, I'm still uh, uh, very determined uh, in uh, believing that ASEAN could handle this and eventually for the survival of Myanmar and also the futures uh, the Tatmadaw has to uh, rely on ASEAN assistance in all dimension. It will take time, but this thing will come uh, together. It, it will take time. And I think um, the span will be around uh, five months until the next uh, uh, 76th uh, United Nations General Assembly, uh, which will start uh, in mid-September. So this five months will show whether ASEAN uh, is relevant or not to all this issue within the region, whether we can really uh, move on, uh, as in centralities and all that. But but again, I'm, I'm confident that uh, we, we can proceed and move ahead, yes. Great, thank you. The next question is from Thompson Chow. Thank you for your contribution. Some of the speakers mentioned the limitations of ASEAN's room for maneuvering regarding the Myanmar coup. Protesters in Myanmar are pretty angry at ASEAN for not demanding Myanmar Mai to transfer power to a democratic and civilian government. Is ASEAN unwilling or unable to publicly pressure the Myanmar junta to revert some form of democracy? Is suspension of ASEAN membership or other forms of political or economic punishment on the table if the junta continues its crackdown and clings on to power. Would anyone like to address that? Okay, let me start by saying something. Yeah, well, it's always easy to look at certain conventional formula. When something happened, and people are not happy with the outcome. The demand is for certain solution. Yeah. You know, this discussion so far indicated to me one very important point that our ASEAN leaders have done, which no newspaper up to now has actually studied this carefully. Ming Ong Lai may be regarded as the leader of Tamadong. When he returned home, he has to face the other generals. We assume that he is in complete control, right? So, is that the case? Are we sure? And if you look at the events of the past two and a half months, in Myanmar, all the ethnic groups are now activated. And each of these regions, each of these divisions as the structure of the country is described, they are under different commanders, right? There is no guarantee that everyone who wear one pip to two pip to three pip as general will agree with whatever Min Onglai has been uh, 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 agreeing to in uh, Jakarta. So I think my response to this particular question is that, yeah, we think we have a, a way forward. There's no guarantee that the ASEAN uh, maneuvers will yield any fruits. But is there any other choice? Is there any other choice? Well, many of the media people claim that uh, ASEAN is uh, toothless and this and that. Okay, so what other choice is there? Is the UN prepared to move in its forces? Is there a UN uh, initiative to bring in uh, peacekeepers, who is going to pay for it? Number two, uh, if you look at the geography of Myanmar, everybody who has the hard power, they are worried that the other guy with the better hard power will move in. Uh, so this is the thing that troubles me because when we look at this, we just assume that uh, everything must be formulated the way we play our own chess game. But there are many, many factors. 
So I want to say that uh, our approach is that this is the thing on the table. We do not know what other countries and what other parties can do. But are they willing to do that in the first place? Nobody has done anything. Everybody just pat our back and say, hey, ask them, go and find a solution. In other words, they are saying, I am not getting involved. You find your own solution. Because my domestic opinion in the United States of America, in European Union countries, even in China, is, hey, don't inflict more damage on our property, on our uh, political brownie points and what have you. So I hope that all our thinkers out there who are uh, alert enough to think about all these questions will think about this. We are not saying that the ASEAN way is the best way going forward. We are just trying. And many people have forgotten one very basic point. Kavi always mentioned this to me. The longest serving ASEAN leader in the same job since 30 years ago, the only one is the Sultan of Brunei, who is also the foreign minister, the defense minister, and the finance minister. Who else has the kind of staying power and broad mandate? Yeah. So, several of all our other ASEAN leaders uh, to rally around the Brunei diplomacy. Okay. Yeah, we better get the pressure off our back. And your Majesty, you have been in the ASEAN summit from the beginning. Yeah. So try to lead us to go there. So I feel that we should give the ASEAN guys a chance. Yeah, and stop trying to find all kind of uh, reason to devalue the work of the uh, ASEAN diplomatic uh, move. Yeah. And we can say that maybe the Brunei uh, leadership or chairmanship may falter because uh, the people or the general in Myanmar will play us out. Okay, that can happen. Nobody can deny that. But let's get going and see what shape up in the next few days. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, may I? Thank you. Um, Okay, so um, um, I just want to add add um, a little bit. Um, it's a, um, I want I want you to uh, <laughs> to to see that um, this the Saturday summit um, they it can show something that um, we improve something that um, Myanmar to Myanmar uh, allow us to um, uh, involve uh, in the, in order to try and solve uh, their domestic affairs. So. I think it's um it's a good it's a good start. So and and what about uh, we can do um the ASEAN member can do right now. Actually, uh, as I mentioned in my um my slide PowerPoint, um we we can do in in many other ways like uh we can do like a bilateral negotiation. Um, actually the uh, mem the other member country can help like a private talks, or um maybe um more pressure with the political influence. Uh, some, something up like that. So uh, let's see. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to, if I may, I'd like to underscore the point that uh, Aung Keng Yong uh, said just now. I think, uh, you know, if you think about it throughout ASEAN's uh, existence, there have been so many moments when its obituary have been written. Uh, you know, there have been many moments when uh, questions have been raised uh, about ASEAN's relevance, ASEAN's uh, contributions, and in the face of, of real problems, real challenges. But uh, somehow ASEAN has demonstrated resilience and political tenacity and commitment to be able to manage the problems that it encounters in the region and comes out stronger. And I have uh, confidence that likewise in this particular episode, uh, ASEAN uh, will demonstrate that same level of effort. Of course, it's, it's uh, easier said than done. It's not 
it's not a given. Uh, you know, when you, much hard work needs to be done, and, and patience, resilience, and commitment, perseverance, all those uh, qualities are needed. And and uh, and I'm, I'm sure that the uh, I'm hopeful and sure that the current leadership in ASEAN will uh, deliver on that type of uh, 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 needs or requirement. What is helpful, uh, what is uh, uh, useful at this, at this time is that the broader geopolitical conditions that Pa Ong Ken Yong had mentioned uh, beyond Southeast Asia, beyond ASEAN, actually wants ASEAN to contribute and play a role. This is not always the case. You know, in some other regions, uh, the major power rivalries are so intense and project their own proxy interests that the regional powers become sidelined. But in the case of ASEAN, I think based on its past record, uh, there is a, a sense of goodwill and, and space being given uh, to ASEAN. You can, you can describe it as being pressure or expectation or even opportunity being given to ASEAN to deliver. And I think uh, it is very important for ASEAN to be doing precisely that, as has been demonstrated uh, by, by the summit, which is significant and offer promise. And, and I don't want to be belittling the summit's importance because it has important five points that we can use as benchmark, as I said before. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Vietnam is still currently a member of the UN Security Council uh, in New York. Again, that provides ASEAN as a, another channel to communicate its regional level efforts to the United Nations level uh, efforts. But there are, if I may, just some rather self-consumed ASEAN interests, uh, procedural interests that ASEAN must try to manage. And I, and I apologize to our uh, Myanmar viewers if it seems to be too ASEAN consumed. But I think ASEAN must have a script in dealing, for instance, at the United Nations, there will be forthcoming uh, meeting of the Credentials Committee before any United, United Nations General Assembly session, wherein the question of who represents Myanmar will come to the fore. Uh, it's, a, it's a committee made up of member states, uh, not all member states, but will be recommended to the General Assembly. ASEAN must have a common position on that. Uh, and this is not a uniquely ASEAN phenomenon. I remember in the past there was some debate, for instance, on the country of Afghanistan, who represents who in, in at the UN. So ASEAN must have a consolidated view on that so that it doesn't become full-blown ASEAN division in New York. Likewise, ASEAN is going to have a series of ASEAN foreign ministers level meeting, I assume, in June, July or August. Uh, would the presence of, uh, of uh, the junta at these meetings, uh, how would, what kind of dynamic and message would it send to our dialogue partners? I remember in the past, Pong Ken Yong, we went through all these uh, permutations. We, we as ASEAN 10, we stand solidly behind Myanmar at that time to say it's not for them to, to suggest whatever we, 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 how we should be, but we have to have a, some kind of a modality in dealing with this issue. And to someone's point earlier about suspending, or etc., uh, Myanmar's membership, I'm not. Uh, I'm not obviously a lawyer. I'm not obviously a legally uh, trained on legal matters. But my recollection is that the ASEAN Charter doesn't actually provide, unlike, for instance, the Organization of African Unity and others, or the Commonwealth, uh, for the suspension of a member because of. Uh, 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 constitu lack of constitutional government. But uh, in ASEAN, there is provision of that, if I'm mistaken, in the Charter that requires uh, evaluation in cases where the Charter is deemed to have been violated by a member state and for it to be uh, drawn to the attention of member states. Now, again, the importance of the Saturday meeting is that we are all on the same page now. As I said before, the, Myan the junta, junta in Myanmar cannot be allowed to wiggle out of their commitment. We have clear benchmark to measure progress or lack of progress. So if ASEAN member states feel the five points are not being implemented in weeks, months to come, and I get Paung Keng Yong's point that we have to, this is a process, as I have said, we have to 
it's not patience, but we need to allow these developments to, 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 to occur. But there must be some kind of, a, uh, 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 you know, to keep them honest, to keep the junta honest in terms of their commitment. And I think this is what this is what the five point is. And meanwhile, in my view, in my personal view, in my personal view, it seems quite surreal, quite unacceptable to me to have any discussions involving the junta on any other issues to do with ASEAN. How can you talk with the representative of the junta on, on ASEAN community building this and that, this and that, when they are, they are there, the only issue that they are allowed, that we should be interacting with them is on the issue of this, the five points. Uh, otherwise, it makes mockery you know, to have a representative of Munhunta me talking about ASEAN connectivity, et cetera, et cetera, for instance, or ASEAN uh, identity, et cetera, when, when they are, people are being shot at. People are being shot at by a military that is supposed to defend the country, but they are shooting at their own citizens. I don't know. I'm, I, 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 don't, I can't imagine ASEAN sitting to talk about ASEAN community, ASEAN connectivity, etc. The only subject matter for the junta is the five points and keep them uh, on track on that. Thank you. Yes, can, can I say something, Tanhui? Tanhui? Yeah. Well, um, yes, I, I, I have this to say. Very interesting, the point uh, made by uh, Pat Mati about uh, ASEAN leaders. Uh, ASEAN charter does not have provisions to suspend member. But ASEAN leaders, when they get together, they can decide to support Myanmar or not to support Myanmar. And that will happen in the final analysis. If given a certain period, if this five point consensus in the eyes of the current chair that Myanmar has not done so, Myanmar betray on its commitment, I am sure ASEAN leaders ASEAN chair, particularly, I have to repeat, this ASEAN chair will decide that you are no longer, we will not give you any support. Now, what is the best thing that happened on Saturday is that ASEAN has established personal trust. They see eye to eyes, they read each body language. I look at the pictures, I can see very Celine, everybody sit quietly and uh, uh, everybody set out uh, the uh, common view. And if that is the case, when there come a time to assess whether the military regime has done to fulfill its commitment or not on the uh, 24th of April, and the decision that made will based on that, if ASEAN decided in, in the next meeting, hey, listen, Myanmar just fool us, then I think ASEAN will wait no time to go for a decisive uh, decision. And that, I think, ASEAN always think of uh, a ways to uh, engage with the so-called crisis. Look at the SAR. Uh, remember the SAR? Uh, uh, when we face that uh, leader come together, 2008, when there's a right crisis, shortage, uh, ASEAN leader come together and find solution. We, I wanted to uh, make two points quickly. We, uh, in the coverage of the discussion at the ASEAN Summit in uh, Jakarta on Saturday, I think two things were not properly focused on. One, both the Tamado as well as the democratically elected parliamentarians uh, the NUG now they call it National Unity Government. They both sides support the 2008 Myanmar Constitution. Well, this is a bit different from all the other scenario elsewhere or even in the past, where one party contending for power reject a particular constitution or particular version of constitution. Now, both the contending uh, group in Myanmar accepted that their legitimacy originated from legitimacy of action originated from the same Myanmar constitution of 2008. Yeah, 
The Tamadol say, according to the constitution, they have to protect the stability and uh, uh, security of the country. The democratic forces say that under the 2008 uh, Myanmar constitution, they proceeded to take uh, election, to do the election, and from that election, this is the outcome. Therefore, they are allowed to assume power. Okay, so how are we going to square this thing out? Basically, uh, for an uh, outsider, we are just scratching our head and say, both of you agree to the fundamental foundational basis of each of your claim to power. <coughs> then how? It's not like elsewhere, where after a junta took over, they changed the constitution, they reorganized everything. Here, the fundamental basis is the state. Number two, we refer to uh, you refer to uh, uh, Mati's uh, reference to the UN uh, uh, credential committee and all that. It's a very important point, and that's why our ASEAN process is a marvelous uh, magic. If you look at all the statement made yeah, by all the ASEAN delegation in the summit on Saturday in Jakarta at the ASEAN sector. No one address being online as the leader or the governmental power in charge in Myanmar. Every one of our participating ASEAN leaders and delegation regarded him as a commander of the Tamadol, which if we go back to both sides agreeing to the 2008 Myanmar constitution, it is still there. Nobody acknowledged uh, that this is the leader of a new government. We call him general, we call him senior general, we call him, uh, address him as commander in chief of Tamadol. Nobody say you are the leader of the country called Myanmar. So I want to suggest that uh, there are many things going on. Uh, and when we talk about all these principles and legality and all that, people tend to forget. Uh, if our envoy is going to go to Myanmar, we are going to be seized with this problem. Uh, both sides say, I believe in the 2008 constitution. Then what's the problem? It's an interpretation of who is doing the right thing or not. Now, if there is no judge to say you did the right thing or not, thing, uh, how? Number two, uh, I don't think ASEAN has any way ASEAN member country has in any way recognized that the general in charge is the leader of the new of a new Myanmar government. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Well, well, to be fair, there has been a lot of debate about this 2008 constitution and the anti-coup movement has been uh, quite vocal about the rejection of the two, 2008 constitution. But I uh, take your point that they do base their legitimacy on the charter. Well, let's move on to our uh, next question uh, from Granville Hopkinson. How should we interpret the absence of the three ASEAN members during the summit? I think um, it meant the absence of the three heads of governments, um, Philippines, Thailand, and Laos. Do you want to tackle that question? Yeah, well, I can explain the case of Thailand. I can explain it. Uh, it's very easy. I think uh, our prime minister missed the opportunity to attend the, the summit, uh, to touch base and meet face to face uh, with other leaders. Uh, for the past 16 months, they haven't seen each other. But that doesn't mean that uh, Thailand interest, Thailand roles in, in this crisis uh, uh, was not there. In fact, uh, uh, he was given the full mandate as a special envoy and uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Don Paramatvinay was actually the key person who has been engaging uh, uh, in the Myanmar crisis uh, since February 1st. Uh, contact uh, directly with other ASEAN member and also also the chair. 
And the reason uh, why our pr prime minister didn't go there was the uh, the uptick of the infection during the week preceding the uh, summit, especially during the uh, traditional New Year's. The number in the uh, week ahead of the summit increased almost double for the past six months. So he thought that, you know, it would be a political suicide indeed, because his job as a prime minister is to take care of uh, foremost uh, the health and life of the Thai person. So he decided uh, not to uh, attend the meeting, but he follow up. That, that's my, my answer to the question in the case of Thailand. Can I add? Can I add? Okay, so um, in, in case that uh, maybe um, um, we, we it seems like um, Thailand did not take much action in this case, but um, I, I actually uh, like it, it, it seems like we try to protect some 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 people say it like that we try to protect Myanmar, but actually um, uh, uh, I want you to um, you today to, to to know about that our country um, um, I mean Myanmar and Thailand so we we very like close and we have a, a long history together and also we have a strong business links um, so this is very in, in very sensitive issue between Thai and Myanmar but. Um, uh, anyway, I, I think that uh, we try to to do something. But in um, if you can see that uh, Kundon for Martinite, um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, uh, he proposed something. He proposed about the we we call it D four D, D four D is for uh, like D the D four D D S this a uh, D escalating violence and deliver delivery um, humanitarian assistance. This shot of detainees. And dialogue. So this is a um, it's our Thai uh, Thailand purpose um, about the way to uh, uh, to to try to um, say something to to the Myanmar crisis. Thank you. We, I want to say that uh, uh, to analyze the action of three ASEAN leaders, uh, as uh, the question was put to us uh, for being absent. Um, my answer is that will their presence make a difference? Will there be a eight-point consensus rather than this five-point consensus? So the important thing, we go back to the mandate. Uh, each of the three leaders, representative at the meeting, uh, wasn't the uh, driver of the leader or his uh, research officer. Uh, in the case of Thailand, it was the former uh, UN ambassador who is the foreign minister as well as the deputy prime minister. In the case of the Philippines, uh, it was the foreign minister. In the case of uh, uh, Laos, it was also the foreign minister. And I'm sorry, I'm a bit biased here. As far as I'm concerned, in ASEAN, foreign ministers are very important because the uh, they are the overall. Uh, we 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 have a, a saying, yeah. The foreign minister may be the basement of a building. Because if they are not there, there is no first floor, second floor. Yeah. So I think, while I was quite initially disappointed that three of the leaders uh, will not be able to attend, but the outcome, as I see it now, uh, Really, they are absent while regrettable, uh, and for the reason that you have heard in the case of Thailand, I don't know about Laos and Philippines, but I think the outcome uh, have been good, even with the absence of these three guys. Yeah, so I I think we need not go and analyze uh, what does this mean. Is it because they don't agree? Uh, I wish I can sit back and look at all the. Uh, unfortunately, we were not privy to what actually been discussed. Uh. Actually, we, 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 in our old days, we used to have a little chart, no? a clipboard. Uh. We clip and say, uh, point one, two, three. Uh, who said, who did not agree? And if I have a clipboard to analyze, uh, 
what the respective leaders have said, it will be more or less they agree on these five points. Yeah. And also the particular point, I believe, because everyone told me, uh, uh, third hand sources, of course, they have not recognized uh, the uh, general as the leader of a new government in Myanmar. They recognize him as the military leader. So I think um, maybe let us have a, some time to go over the outcome of the summit and really ask ourselves, uh, is it a good thing to keep analyzing why three ASEAN leaders didn't turn up? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, having said that, um, you know, the question about legitimacy and how these uh, various ASEAN countries took certain steps not to recognize uh, General Ning Lang as the representative of Myanmar. I mean, to be fair, there have been all these senior officials meetings in ASEAN that have been conducted by civil servants that are operating under the junta. So I guess in the next few weeks and months ahead, you know, the question like Dr. Marty said will become thornier. Eventually ASEAN would have to face that question, how and who it will recognize as the representative of Myanmar. Uh, we move on to the next question from Phil Robertson. This is a question to all panelists. Is there a way for ASEAN to insist on both a timeline and benchmarks for the implementation of the five-point consensus? How can this be done and what kind of timeline is reasonable? I think just now we heard something like five months, uh, but I'm not sure. What, what do you think is a reasonable timeline? Well, if I may, uh, uh, I, I did I did describe the five points before as as a, of a benchmark of a sort. I mean, at least now post the summit, post summit, uh, there is a reference point to measure progress or lack of progress uh, vis a vis Myanmar's uh, development in Myanmar, the ending of the violence, the initiation of a dialogue, the receipt the. Myanmar being open to the special envoy and the delegation and humanitarian assistance. So these are clear benchmark that the uh, the uh, junta has also, notwithstanding the subsequent qualification, have also at the summit uh, joined the consensus in, and therefore that's a very useful uh, benchmark. Uh, I always hesitate in having publicly declared deadline or timeline, because it's not, I know it may sound a bit uh, 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 unacceptable for when, when we have a situation where you need to have progress here and now, because whatever timeline one sets, whether it be one week, 10 days, 10 months, whatever, it is sort of like uh, immediately has a built-in impression as if Pending that, we will tolerate whatever will will happen because uh, actually we don't tolerate because we we don't want to have any delay, even one day delay because one day means more casualties, more more people being killed, and and being and, and suffering, and therefore the the only relevant relevant timeline is if one is asked, must be immediately has to be implemented. Uh, the the uh, the consensus document, if I'm not mistaken, I stand to be corrected, I don't have it in front of me. In all of the five points, they use the term shall. Shall. Uh, uh, not may, would, could, but shall. What well, It is a very determined, almost instruction, almost wishing this to happen right away. So I think, I don't think it's useful to have any, any by saying it's not useful to have a timeline, I'm not saying we will tolerate continued delay, but I think that timeline must be in the mind of the special envoy and the leaders of ASEAN in, the, in their private discussion. Uh, but to put it out there, I think will defeat the purpose because immediately there is a, 
uh, you know, I mean, some parties may want to procrastinate, want to, to play out the process. But if any timeline must be given, to me, it has to be now. <laughs> the whole thing, the five point has to end right away. It has, it has to be implemented right away. Uh, ending of violence. Uh, but it's a process. As others have said, I'm, I'm only too aware that these things, it's not like a magic wand that you can have it immediately. But uh, we must act with a sense of urgency. And I, I did suggest just now two things that I feel a little bit important at the moment. One is to consolidate communication with the democratic forces, the democratically elected leaders, because they have not been post-summit. I mean, the summit was like a, a red carpet, literally, for the junta. Now, surely the democratically elected leaders, the national unity government, is deserving of some kind of a for open public interaction. It doesn't have to be with all ASEAN 10. It could be in the presence of the chair of ASEAN on behalf of all to con or the secretary general to convey the results of the chair of the summit. But it is important to put it out there. And the second point on measuring the violence progress or lack of progress. The ASEAN secretariat can set up a desk I know it sounds so minimalistic, that basically you have a monitoring team now. You have a monitoring team based on public reports, all the reports that we receive from various quarters, what are the casualty figures? Who is being held, not only numbers, but who perpetrated these things? Some of these are perpetration of violence are being seen you know, real, you can see the, the faces of these people must not be allowed there must not be impunity. Responsibility to protect doesn't simply mean intervention. It's a responsibility of the state concerned to protect. So when we say responsibility to protect, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be gung ho UN Security Council Charter mandated force to come in and interfere, force an outcome. It is consistent with sovereignty. That's why we use the term responsibility to protect. That is what all of us worked on in the UN before. Uh, hence, uh, I remember the, uh, uh, the late Surin Pisuan, uh, our Secretary General of ASEAN, spoke eloquently on this point as well, how responsibility to protect an ASEAN community goes hand in hand. It is as good as an ASEAN principle. We've been speaking about people-centered ASEAN. How more people can you be if you have people being shot? Is that a people-centered ASEAN? I don't think so. But, but again, once again, the summit provides a potential solution, a potential roadmap. Uh, we are better today than we were last week. At least we have a script and ASEAN has come forward. And ASEAN deserves support by the international community by and by all of us. Thank you. We, I want to say, if I'm a Myanmar military leader, I have a timeline, okay? The timeline is how long Aung San Suu Kyi is going to be alive. Because if you look at the country, who else can rally the kind of numbers that allow Myanmar to develop in the last 10 years? Yeah. Mind you, she wasn't yet successful she isn't successful in bringing every ethnic group into the fold. But every military strategist in the Tamado knows yeah, she is able to keep the union of Myanmar uh, according to what the soldiers have sworn as the union of Myanmar. So if uh, they continue to keep her in detention, a health deteriorate, yeah. I don't think it's going to be good for the longer plan, a longer term strategy of the Myanmar uh, Tamado. If Tamado really believe in their commitment to the 2008 constitution to uphold the security, stability, and well-being of the country called Union of Myanmar, they have a timeline. 
they could not they cannot afford to 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 to, to carry on the way it has been uh, exhibited in the last uh, few months yeah without on san suchi the the case at the icj would have gone the other way yeah and how what ha what will happen to the country the country will be further divided and further broken up so if you are a thinking general or thinking soldier you have a timeline yeah and there are nobody else uh, if you look around the whole Myanmar diaspora and even in the country, up till today, no one has told me there is another person of that stature to bring together all these uh, forces to give a modicum of statehood to a country called Union of Myanmar. Thank you. Um. Okay, so uh, in my opinion, um, I think that the five point um, consensus, is like I, I, I said, I mentioned already, is no time frame. Like, but anyway, the first priority, I think, uh, what they should do is now, like, stop uh, violence, and also um, uh, another thing is the humanitarian uh, assistance is very important right now, and anyway, the five point um, consensus, um, I think, it's like it's it's a it's not the process like to do step by step. It's no need to do that. Actually, they can do like um, at the same time. So I think um, if we uh, talk about um, uh, time frame um, right now, so uh, maybe um, I'm, I'm worried that it's uh, too too late to, to help um, people in Myanmar country. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kunkawi, would you like to add anything about how long oh, no, this uh, should take? No, 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 uh, no, nothing. Okay, sure. Well, we have time for one last question for tonight. Uh, this is from Mia Skiltino from C Junction. Shouldn't the main benchmark uh, be to free the prisoners? Why was this not included um, at the last moment uh, in the consensus? And should shouldn't it be included before any dialogue starts? How can dialogue happen when those who should be in the dialogue um, are instead in jail? I think that's, that's a good a... point. That's a good point. Uh, let me offer my comments and then Mati maybe can join and the rest can join. The way I learned about ASEAN documentation is that you look from one page one to the last page. Okay, in some cases they have the main document and then they have annexes. Yeah, sometimes critical points were put in the annexes and not in the main document. At other time. A uh, critical point were put in the main document, but not in the annexes. So when I saw that the five point consensus did not cover the release of political prisoners, as some of the leaders have advocated, in my case, my prime minister, he himself, as well as my foreign minister, has said, we work for the release of political prisoners. And then when I saw the five point, I didn't see the release political prisoner. So I went back to the original main document. Yeah, the long story that uh, precedes the five points. And there was an acknowledgement there, I think paragraph eight or something. This is an open document now, you can actually look at it. Yeah, where they say uh, ASEAN leaders, some ASEAN leader or something to the effect that some of the leaders present uh, stress the need for dialogue, involvement of all parties, and as for therefore necessary to have the release of political prisoners. So as far as, say, if I'm in Singapore, my concern is that I have raised this point, but it was not in the final five-point consensus agreement, maybe because if I am Myanmar, uh, I agree to this five point, but if you put that release of political prisoner, Hey, uh, but Mati and Kavi will know 
immediate action. I have to release tomorrow. And if I don't release, that means I fail to comply with the five point or the six point agreement. So I think there is a bit of maneuver here. Yeah. But at the end of the day, for the majority of the ASEAN countries, at least from the media statement made by all the leaders, including the Prime Minister of uh, Thailand, I think he also advocate release of political prisoner, although he's not there. Yeah. So it is true. If to be if we want to be credible, we cannot go and negotiate uh, without all parties who happen to be in jail being present. So this is something something very important, and I think uh, going forward, our uh, friends in the media ought to look at this particular point, and this is where uh, media can help. If we are credible, we want to have a participation by all stakeholders. That means we have to look at the release of some of these guys. From my own experience, yeah, in the early years, Bamati, when in the 2000, uh, late 2000, early 2000, when we had to deal with a boycott of Myanmar by other countries, yeah, the participation of some of the uh, NLD people uh, in the open was very important because they could uh, make a statement carried by the media, yeah. But if they are all behind bar, then their position will not be known to all of us, and it will not be uh, they will not be able to gain the kind of knowledge or the kind of uh, uh, support that they have obtained during that period. So for now, release of political prisoners is an important point, at least for me. Uh, and if we are sincere about having more uh, uh, participation by all the stakeholders, this particular element should be pursued uh, uh, in a more concerted way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, would anyone have anything right. else to add on this question of political prisoners? Yeah. Uh, just may I, may I say something, Pui? Uh, I, I uh, underscore the point that Pa Ong Keng Yong had said. Uh, a document of, of this type uh, produced by ASEAN is uh, always a product of very complex uh, negotiations and discussions uh, crafted in a way that uh, in, uh, in a way that can carry consensus. And there must be a reason as to why the reference to the heard calls for the release of political prisoners, uh, was placed not amongst the five consensus points, but rather in the uh, body of the chairman's statement, uh, accompanying or, or prefacing the, the uh, five-point principles. There must have been a reason. Uh, it must have been a delicate uh, uh, balance of how one can have it expressed in a way that can still maintain a consensus. While words matter, and of course statements matter, but I think the main import, the principal importance is that the clarion call for the release of uh, not only so-called political prisoners, but actually democratically elected leaders. This is a, this is, imagine you, you just had a, they just had an election. They just had an election that was monitored and all for all purposes deemed to be, to be, to, to be sound in its, in its proceedings. And then just on the eve of, uh, the parliamentarians being being uh, uh, being of, of, uh, appointed, they were arrested. So, and then to Pang Keng Yong's point, uh, how can one have a dialogue amongst all stakeholders when these stakeholders are behind bars? And and it just it just uh, uh, doesn't make sense. And therefore, I would like to think that the. Uh, the requirement for the release of political prisoners, aside from being mentioned uh, in the main body of the chairman's statement, is inherent in the second point of the chairman's, uh, the consensus point, namely an all-inclusive dialogue, uh, wherein it must be inherent that the, the uh, release of political prisoners must be, uh, must be, uh, must take place. And, and I'm glad, as Pa Ong had said, I think all, quite a few of the ASEAN leaders have been quite uh, vociferous and quite 
persistent in airing this point, and I think that it, we must all echo that point. Hence, my original point, I think it is extremely important, critically important for ASEAN in the days to come, and this is where I'd like to put a timeline. Uh, I, I, hesitate, I, I was, I'm generally hesitant, but on this issue of reaching out to the other side, so-called other side, the democratically elected leaders, the NUG, the uh, civil disobedience movement, the uh, other stakeholders, ASEAN must be seen in the days to come to be communicating with them as well. Uh, otherwise, the last word, the last image is as if it is the junta that's being conferred the red carpet treatment. I know at to Paung Keng Yong's point, yes, none of ASEAN member states suggest they have conferred uh, 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 conferred recognition, and they have been extremely uh, 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 nuanced and, and smart in, in the language that they use to avoid a suggestion of conferment of recognition. But this is an issue that will is that will confront ASEAN in other forums. It's not only an ASEAN level issue. It will soon be brought within ASEAN whenever others wants to come at the United Nations. So ASEAN must have a script on how to demonstrate their non conferment of recognition in these other forums. Uh, otherwise, we will be, you know, it will, we will, ASEAN will, 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 will have difficulties. But again, it is not the issue at hand while we are talking about ASEAN, the real issue at hand and must be central to our attention is Myanmar is the crisis in Myanmar. We are, we all, all of us in this process discussion, we all wish to see ASEAN do well, but uh, you know, solutions, we have to be open-minded to different ways and means to find a solution. Of course, ASEAN centrality, et cetera, is the preferred mode for many of us, but uh, you know, it, sh it shouldn't be solution looking for a problem. Uh, you know, we have to identify what is the nature of the problem and find the appropriate solution. It could be ASEAN, it could be some other solution, but ASEAN certainly has stepped up to the plate and the leaders must be commended for that. Thank you. Well, I just have a little to add. I think uh, in ASEAN document, inclusive dialogue, uh, taking into consideration the release of our, our political prisoner, which I think uh, uh, not only three or four, but the consensus for all other ASEAN countries, even though it did not uh, spe specifically uh, spell out. And I think one, uh, one thing that uh, uh, we have to mention is the comfort level between the Myanmar uh, stakeholder, in this case, the Tatmadaws and the elected MP or the political prisoner, or for that matter, those who have been arrested, journalists include uh, doctors, professionals, uh, people, and all that. So I think the next step is to make sure that the comfort levels among Myanmar concerning party uh, find a suitable sort of a, uh, platform so that they can talk. Uh, what comes first? Uh, a few, uh, to answer a few questions is that uh, timeline can be double-edged source because it can create false expectation by all parties which cannot be met realistically. But, but one thing uh, that must be expected and all of us agree is that immediate uh, cessation of violence. And I think this will, uh, will need to be confirmed and really work on it before any other solid step uh, can be done. For example, assessments, uh, scooping, for real situations on the humanitarian assistance and, and other things. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Prabhi, would you like to add anything? Oh, uh, no. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, very thought provoking comments. I uh, take your point that although the release of political prisoners was not explicitly mentioned in the five-point consensus, it was implicit in the point about having an inclusive dialogue among all stakeholders. And it's interesting because um, 
several representatives of the national unity government have already uh, stated that they are ready to engage ASEAN and uh, the special envoy that ASEAN is going to appoint. So that's something positive and that's a space to look at. Well, um, the situation in Myanmar is unfolding as we speak and uh, it will take some time before any form of resolution takes shape. So, you know, did ASEAN make a strategic compromise with the junta to get its foot in the door? Or, you know, would this turn out to be another measure used by the junta to buy time? Well, the, the jury is still out, but um, that's all we have for our discussion today. If you like what uh, we have been doing and would like to support these uh, public service live streams, please consider taking up an FCCT membership or making a donation. You can find the details on our Facebook account. Once again, uh, thank you to all our panelists and viewers out there. And to our friends in Myanmar, keep strong and stay safe. Thank you, everybody, and have a very good night.